In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, print, and export to Excel our month-end type of reports after having entered data for the first month of operations. That will include the income statement or profit and loss, the balance sheet, and a transaction detailed report. Let's go with zero. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars dashboard. We're going to be generating our reports by going to the accounting dropdown. We're going to start off with that balance sheet report. We'll open up that balance sheet report. When that generates itself, we're going to go up to the tab up top, right click on it, and we will then duplicate that tab. Let's go back to the tab to the left then, and we're going to open up the next report. That's going to be the P&L or income statement. Selecting the accounting drop down, we're going to go down to that income statement report. It'll then generate itself up top as well. I'm going to right click on that tab up top, right clicking on that tab and duplicate that tab. So we got the balance sheet, we got the income statement. Then we're going to have the transaction kind of report that we want to do. I'm going to go back to the left. We're going to go to the accounting drop down for this one. We're going to take a look at the reports. We're going to go into the reports themselves and look at that transaction detail. This report giving us, you know, the detail of the transactions as we have entered them. Really good for reviewing work seeing how we did and basically also counting the the transactions that we have if we want to bill on a transaction by transaction basis and this time let's take a look at the journal report for this kind of activity i'm going to go to the journal report open that one up and then i'm going to duplicate that tab as well i'm going to right click on that tab and duplicate it so these are going to be kind of some general reports. You can add a lot more detail in the month in kind of financial statements. Remember that you want to give this information possibly to a supervisor or a client kind of periodically and put together the statements and how you put them together is kind of half of the half of the work here because you want it to look nice and whatnot so you can give it to them. If you're dealing with a lot of clients, they may not really need you a whole lot to they need you to enter the data, but they're really going to be needing things at the end of the year, possibly, or the end of the month when they need to make financial statements or the end of the quarter. So what you want to do periodically, monthly, or you know, every time you process the, the information is to put this together in a nice way so you can give it to them. They might not even you know, need that information, but you want to be able to say, hey, look, I'm here. We have all the information uh, and, and I'll be here for you at the end of the year when it becomes really important at that point in time. So then we have, uh, so what we need then is the actual the balance sheet, the income statement. You can make more graphs if you want to, supporting documentation for anything that's important here. If accounts receivable is important, you can give more information related to that or accounts payable. You can give graphs related to the, to the revenue and the major sources of revenue if you so choose. But we're just going to be printing these items out. And then the journal report, these are the minimum. You can, Obviously, the balance sheet and the income statement are you going to provide in the minimum. Then the journal report, I uh, can give you some idea in terms of billing or how someone did. If you're reviewing someone else's work or reviewing your own work, you can go through this and, and look at the transactions that have happened, how many transactions have happened. If you want to bill based on transactions, then you can also run a report such as this as well and say, hey, I'm going to bill you per transaction. If you're, if you're between this many and this many transactions, it's this is how much I charge. If you're between this many and this many transactions, this is how much I charge. And that's one way that you can get away from that hourly kind of model which isn't as efficient or, a, you know, it's, it's nicer to have something that's a little bit more concrete than, than the hourly model. It's, it's better. It's often easier on both you and, and the client to have that. So I would try to try to do that or think about how you can do that as well. So I'm going to go back to the uh, balance sheet here and we're going to say that we want this. I'm going to say for the end of January, we're going to pick this up for the end of January here. There is our balance sheet. Let's just take a look at it. Here's the numbers we have. If we were going to just review through it, we've got the checking account. We've got the uh, clearing account, which still has that 300. We never deposited there. We've got the, we should go to the bank and deposit that by the way, but that's okay. We've got the accounts receivable. We've got the inventory. We have the investment that we put into E-Trade. We've got the prepaid insurance. Now a month has gone by, so we should be basically expensing some of that. That's going to be in the adjusting entries. We're going to do that after the two months uh, of of information because I don't want to do them twice. Basically, I want to enter two months and then talk about what adjusting entries are. So we'll, do, we'll we will do an expense related to that later. We've got uh, the computer and equipment. Again, these are the fixed assets. There will be an adjusting entry related to them as well for depreciation. We'll talk about in the in the adjusting entry uh, section of the course and adjusting entries you might do periodically or or uh, you know monthly or yearly possibly. We've got the credit card. We've got the federal uh, payroll tax liability. We're going to have to pay at some point. The sales tax, we're going to have to pay at some point to the governments. And then we have the long-term liabilities. So here are those items. And then, of course, the equity section, which is breaking out the current portion that we have thus far. We have a loss in the current year there. 
Then we in, we deposited 65,000 and the retained earnings, uh, which is rolling forward of income in prior periods uh, is the 85,396. Obviously our total liabilities and equity match our total assets and the system basically forces us to do that, right? So we're, we're gonna be in balance because we use accounting software, which is nice. Now also note that uh, if you're giving this to a supervisor, you probably want the detail such as the notes payable being broken out here. But you also might want to say if you're giving this to somebody else, you may not want that detail. You may not want to give that detail to, to somebody you might want to clean that up. How could you clean that up? You can make an internal report and an external report. The external report might do something like this. Just for an example, I'll just I'll just give an example and then I'll uh, so I could go back down and and clean up some of these accounts so if i wanted to go down to those liability accounts i could say i would just like to take both of these and put them into one line item so i'm going to group those together and say i'm just going to call this uh no pay let's pay a bowl like that that's how you do it and then you can say done and that'll that'll put those into into one account down there. So I won't do that. I won't clean it up for for all of it. But just note, you you could clean that up anytime you have an account numbers in here. If I said E Trade because I want that in my accounting, I could make a, another report that doesn't include E Trade. You know, because that's kind of you don't really need that in a, in an external report. Now you note I made a subcategory, but I didn't close it up. So I'm going to go back in here one more time into the to the edit layout. And I'll close it up this time. So I'm going to go back down there and I'm going to say that I'm going to close it up. So I just want to see one line item is the point. That's why I did it. That's what the point is. Okay. And then if we scroll back down, then we just have that one line item for the, the notes payable. Okay. So then if we look at this current year uh, earnings, that's going to tie out to the income statement. So if I go to the income statement, which is a loss at this point, but that's okay. It's, we're still early. It's, it's normal to have a loss. Don't panic business is is still thriving and doing okay so we're going to go back to uh, january here and we'll pick that up as of the 31st now and update this and then if i go down to the PL, there's that five uh seven three seven ninety three so here's the per the profit and loss kind of ties in they're tying it in in essence to uh the balance sheet through that portion of the equity section which is unusual you don't typically see that on normal balance sheets but they're trying to kind of indicate how these two forms, these two documents, these two financial statements are basically tied together. So then on the income statement, we of course have the income related to merchandise sales and the service sales, the cost of goods sold, and then all other expenses we have down below. And that currently results in a loss. We have more expenses than we do revenue at this time. But I'm, I think next month we're, we'll do better. So it's okay. No panic in here. The guitar shop is still going all right, so then we're going to go and let's print this thing out. So we're going to go to the balance sheet. Let's do our standard kind of uh, activity here. We're going to go to the export. We're going to export it to a PDF. By the way, if your numbers don't line up to the numbers here, try to uh, drill down on the number that, that doesn't line up and then check your dates up top. Check your dates and like move the date out and see if there anything has changed because we haven't entered anything in, in after January. So if it's a date thing and you change the date forward, just see if any account changes. And if it does, then go into that section that has changed. Look for the date that is not in January of 2020 and adjust it. All right. So then we're going to take that PDF file. We're going to put that into our folder. So here's our folder. I'm just going to go ahead and drag, drag and drop that in there. Then I'll rename it. I'm going to right click on it and just rename this report the balance sheet. Balance sheet. And there we have it. Let's do the same for the income statement. So I'm going to pull this back over here. Let's do the same thing for the income statement. And I'm going to go to the export and I'm going to export the PDF file. It's going to like show up down there. And then I'm once it, I'm going to pull that into our, our folder and drop that into the old folder. And then we can rename that thing. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to rename it and call that the income statement, not with an S. All right. And then we can do the same thing for the, the journal report. We will come in and review the journal report in a bit more detail, but notice you want to check these two, two numbers and then come over and check your numbers on the, on the journal report. And the journal report is also something that you can, if there's something's off there, you can use it to drill down, look at the activity that is off. 
You can also use it to count the number of transactions that you have. Scrolling down to the bottom of the journal report, I'm going to say export and we want to export it to a PDF and that'll open up once again. And so I'm going to take that one. I'm going to grab it and pull it on over into our files. And then I'm going to rename. I'm going to right click on that and we'll rename that one and we'll call it the journal report. All right. And then we can export these as well. So I'm going to go back to our old balance sheet over here. And uh, now I'm going to export it as has been our tradition. So we're going to export it to Excel. We're going to use Excel then to make one PDF file uh, for these items as well. So there it is. I'm going to grab, over, grab that one, pull it into our folder once again. And this one I'm just going to call financial statements, right? I'm going to right click on that one. I'm going to call it financial statements for January 2020. And then we can open that one up, take a look at what it looks like. Here's what it looks like. Obviously it, it looks wonderful. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this into another uh, sheet. So I'm going to open up another sheet because I want to get the grid lines back. And this is the easiest way I know to do it. I'm going to go back to the first tab. I'm going to highlight the entire thing by selecting the triangle up top, or you can say control a right click and just copy that entire thing going to go to the second tab now be in a1 you got to be in cell a1 up top and right click and then i'll just paste that entire thing there we have it now i'm going to increase the size back up to 150 down here it's at 100 i'm going to bring that on up to 150 the 150 then i'm going to delete this one i no longer need it anymore i'm going to be on the tab down below right clicking on it and delete that tab and then I'm just going to make this one the balance sheet by double clicking on it. And I'm just going to call it BS for the balance sheet. Then I'm going to save it up top and we're going to do the same thing for the income statement. So let's go ahead and uh, bring up the old income statement. So let's take up the income statement. I'm going to export this. We're going to export it to Excel. Not even going to drag it into our folder this time because I don't want it separately. I just want to take the data that's going to be in this Excel sheet, add it to a new tab in the financial statement kind of report that we made. So here it is. I'm going to go ahead and enable the editing so that I can edit it. And I need to be able to edit. So I have enabled the editing. And then I'm going to select the entire sheet with the little triangle up top where you can say control A. Right click on it and copy it. Then we're going to go back to our other tab. I'm going to add a new sheet in our other tab. I'm going to name it by double clicking on the tab down below. Uh, income statement. Let's just say IS income statement. And then I'm going to Paste that. We've got to be an A1 and paste it one, two, three. Let's bring that up with our to 150% down here in the zoom function. Bring it on up to 150. Then I'm going to save that. That is done. And let's do this one more time. We only get to do it one more time. Then we have to stop because this is our last report. Going back down to the journal report, we're going to be exporting that to Excel as well. So that'll open up in Excel, hopefully. I'm just going to open it once again. I'm not going to save it anywhere or drag it into any, any folder or anything like that because I want to just open it up and then take the data from it and then put it into our, um, our other worksheet where we're putting all the data. So here it is. And now we'll take the data by putting our cursor up top on the triangle and copying that right click or and copy or I hit control C that time or you hit use control C. And then I'm going to go over back over here in our Excel sheet. I'm going to make this a journal report. And then we'll put that in A1 and paste it there. And then let's bring this one back up to 150. So I'm going to go on the old zoom function and bring that on up to the 150 there. Let's check and see if this one fits on one page by going to the layout tab. Second little box down below. And it, there's the page break. So it does look like it's all fitting in where we want it to be fitting. Okay, so now we can then print this thing. We'll print this thing out on uh, one PDF, PDF file with our PDF printer. So we're going to go to the file tab. We're going to go on down to the printing option. And we want to print it using the Qt PDF printer. That's going to be a free option. You can download it or have some kind of PDF printer in order to do this. If you wanted to send this to an actual printer, you can do this by, by printing the entire worksheet as well. I'm going to print not just the, the sheet, but the entire workbook. The entire workbook is what we want. Now we have the balance sheet. Then we have the income statement, which is kind of, it's kind of the name's not right. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix it this time. 
this will not so we're going to go back on over to the income statement tab down here i'm going to make this a little bit larger so i'm going to put my cursor right between the a and uh, the b i'm going to so it looks like that and then i'm going to write i'm going to drag this over so now we got the full name <clears throat> now let's go back to the to the file tab note that any kind of anytime you kind of download this type of stuff sometimes you know each software has those little kind of finicky things on how it relates to excel and once you understand them not a big deal so then we're going to go down you just got to go tweak them a bit but then i'm going to go back down again let's check it out again so we've got the balance sheet we've got the income statement we've got the general journal everything looks good to go let's go ahead and print that we will be using the cute pdf printer to do so to print it to the cute pdf printer if you needed to print it to another printer it's all collated for you this way which is nice so you can print multiple copies without like having to uh, you know sort them by hand or anything so there we have it i'm going to go ahead and save this and save that so now if we were to give this to somebody we have them in one folder that we can zip we have them in an excel document which we can print from or we have them in uh, this pdf file as well if we were to open up that pdf file it looks like this and we can have all this on on one report and again when you give this to somebody else at the end of the month you want to give it to them in a, in a nice efficient way to say hey look i'm here you may not need this right now you might need it at the end of the year the end of, you know you might not be as interested at this point in time but here it is want to let you know that i you know put the work in for this we'll be here for you at the end of the year the end of the quarter or whenever this stuff becomes important because it will be important at some point in time so i'm going to close this back out then let's just consider this last report we had with this transaction detail report now if your numbers uh, if anything does not tie out for the income statement and the balance sheet then you want to go to the transaction detail report and kind of hunt around and see uh, you know where what is going to be off in terms of this report in other words if the beginning balances were correct and you entered everything in here correct then uh then everything th everything should be fine so if the beginning balance were, were correct and your ending balances are off then there should be an indication with these transaction reports so i'll scroll through here and you can also take a look at the reports that we will be providing for you if any of these items are off then you gotta want to drill down on these items now if it's just a date issue that, that it's different by basically the date over here then probably not you know a big deal you can't change that but probably not a big deal if it's as long as it's in the same month however if there's something that is missing if there's something on your financial statements that are not on the, these financial statements or this report then it might be that you have a duplicate transaction or something like that in which case you'd want to go in there and delete it uh or something and if it something on this report that's not on your report then you may want to think that that's a date issue possibly and the way the first thing you would want to check is change the date the ending date up uh so it's later and see if if it has then appeared and if it does then you probably have a date issue if something's in february for example instead of january then you want to go into that information so you could go into it by selecting the item it takes a little bit longer to drill down on this kind of journal entry type of format but you could still you know drill down on it we're looking for the january activity so i'm going into the january activity and you could basically drill down <clears throat> into the information that relates to it so now i'm in in the basically the uh check the check transactions and so then you could find the particular transaction that we were relating to which i kind of forgot about i think it was this fifteen thousand on the epiphone and then you can go into the actual document so it takes a little bit longer to kind of drill down to get to the actual form from that journal report but i like that the journal report actually shows you the debits and credits for it and uh, gives you all the detail that you need so it gives you not only the transaction detail but also kind of the complexity uh that, that might be involved in it you know as well in terms of how how complicated the journal entry is how many accounts are going to be involved in it so and and this one we're looking at actually this was the loan transaction so you can see in the checking account you had the loan transaction now notice that it took us a little while to drill down on it that way you might just say hey look it's the loan it's the checking account and then jump over to the balance sheet if you want to drill down on it and go into the checking account and say yeah i'm looking for that sixty-five thousand that was uh, an increase or a debit an increase which is a, a debit increase and that happened on january 1st and then jump back over here and then you could find the sixty-five thousand. that'll be a little bit more direct because if you drill down it on on this side that should be closer to taking you right to the transaction so going going back to the to the report and that's it